Hello everyone, I'm Denise from the University of Sewing and today I've got block number five for you from Granny's 1930 Sampler, which is the book and the pattern that we are using by Ricky Timms. There is something I want to show you in the directions in case you haven't gotten to this block yet. There's something that was new to me and it might be new to you as well. We're pretty used to standard cutting directions and pressing directions and all kinds of tips and pointers in our patterns, but there was something here. Let's get to our block, which is the old maid's puzzle, or as I prefer, the schoolgirl's puzzle. I'm gonna put the book down here, but if you look here in the cutting directions, right here, this little square with the diagonal line to it, that's going to have you cut that square diagonally, just like that. And it makes so much sense, but it was such a new thing to me that I wondered if it was new to anybody else also. I do know that we have some new to quilting people that have joined us. We're very glad to have that. Um, there are people that are here from different sewing backgrounds, maybe garments or different types of construction, or maybe you've not done any sewing, maybe some masks, but you've decided to jump in and join us with our quilting adventure, and I'm so glad you have. I think a sampler is a great way to learn that. You get to try all kinds of new blocks. You may find some that you think, <clears throat> I can sew that block for days, that's awesome. You may find another one that you think, oh, I'm never making that one again, and that's okay too. The idea is to keep trying. So we're gonna continue on with our schoolgirl puzzle block. We've got our finished test block here for you. And the only thing a little tricky about this block is just the placement of the points. It would be super easy to get those turned around and going the wrong direction, and that's more than a little frustrating, but a few minutes with your friend the seam ripper, and that's an easy fix. So what I've got for our finished block today is I've got half of this done. This is basically a four patch. So we've got two of them here. The third one is done, and I thought we'd assemble this one together because it is a little different. Okay, so we're gonna start with this triangle piece sewn to this half square triangle piece. Let's take it over to the sewing machine. Line these up. And we're gonna match up those corners. The one on the bottom is gonna overhang a little and that's okay, we actually want that. Make sure this is lined up nice and straight. It's that attention to detail sometimes that makes all the difference in the world. All right, I'm gonna hold my threads. Once again, I've got my quarter inch foot on my machine. And away we go. And we'll trim that one so we can add the other side. Give you a sneak peek here. Let's add one more to this guy. Tuck this one here. Make sure we're straight in all directions. It really does make a difference in the final block. Now we'll take a peek at this guy and then take it over to the iron and give him a good press. Not bad. Let's go press that nice and flat so we can add the other half of the block. We'll give it a good shot of steam on both of those seams. get this guy opened up here. And again, with these triangle pieces, it's really important not to play too much with them, to get them flat without stretching and tugging. Same thing here. A little weight on it goes a long way. Yeah. 
shot here and a shot here. Looks pretty good. Let's add that other half. I am going to trim off these little dog ears here just to make it a little easier. And these threads that are hanging around. One more over here. All right, now this guy goes right on here. And we're gonna make sure this corner is nice and square. And again, that's gonna go a long way into making sure that our finish block is nice and square and the proper size. Looks pretty good. Well, now we moved on, mate. You know what? Let's use our wonder clips here. Pins are great, wonder clips are good. Whatever you've got to hold things together. And I'm actually going to pin or clip on this side. Opposite of where I'm going to stitch, but again, just to hold things nice and square. Okay, and then our stitching line is from here down. Scoot that corner up just a hair and start nice and slowly. I do have the straight stitch plate on again, so the points of these triangles aren't going to get sucked into the machine. Sometimes they want to do that. I'll pull this little guy off here, make sure we're in good shape down on this end. Coax that down just a little bit. This block really is a fun one, I think. And even as long as I have been quilting, I still get really excited when I put the block together and I go, look, it worked. I don't know why, but I still get really excited. And my scissors here. Trim some threads, maybe. It's trying to sneak away on me. All right, and let's open this guy up. What do you think? Looks kind of cute. And we're going to press that with the seams going to the dark side. And a trick there is to keep the dark side on top and then to press it open. So let's do that quick. And again, we're pressing, we're not ironing, being very gentle with that fabric. Open this guy up. And if you take your fingers and just kind of walk them along this seam line, that helps to make it a little flat without the tugging that we're trying so hard to avoid. And then, you can have the iron finish that off. Let's do one more on the back. How'd we do? What do you think? I think it looks pretty cute. Now let's go add that to the other half of our block and get this block finished off. Now, we did mention that this block is a little tricky just in making sure that things are all going the right direction. So we'll line everything up. The dark piece of our triangle is going to go to the center. And I'm going to trim these dog ears off real quick before we attach. Make our life a little easier here. It's always a good idea. Alrighty, so that's the way our finished block wants to look. 
So let's flip this guy over and attach it here. There are no seams to line up at this point, just those edges. Use our handy dandy wonder clip here again. Let's make sure that's nice and square on there. Sometimes you have to uh, convince it that it's going to go where you want it to go. And we'll stitch these two down. That little guide on my quarter inch foot Clip those threads, take our wonder clips off, let's take a peek at this one, looks pretty good. All right, let's give it one press with the iron and then we can finish it off. Make sure things are all lined up before we press. doesn't make any sense to press them where we don't want them. And again, I'm just going to use my fingers to crease this a little bit. Shot of steam here, shot of steam there. One more on the back, just for good measure. And this little guy's almost done. Alrighty, let's finish him off. Now to sew the two halves together, we do have the center seam line that we're gonna match up. So I'm gonna turn these this way, make sure I have my clips handy. And because we've got this one pressed going to the left, this half pressed going to the right, those seams are gonna nest very nicely. You'll be able to feel that as you press them together with your fingers. And then just to double check, you're looking at this seam line again to line up right here. And we can wiggle that over. And it's almost like they lock and hold each other in place. So I can feel that's nice and flat, and that's where I'm going to put my clip, right on top of that seam. There's no seams over here to match, so we're just going to make sure our corners are lined up nicely. And I'm going to put a clip on the side again, just to hold things in place. No fair wiggling while we're trying to sew. And this one looks like the size is off just a hair, but I think we can squeeze that in. I won't tell if you won't. How's that? Trim off a thread or two here. All right, last one. machine is going to do its thing. Of course our Berninas just don't let us down. Take this guy off and I'm just going to peek under to make sure we're still in good shape there. Looks pretty good. This is definitely a slow and steady kind of process. Not something you want to rush. I know when I rush then I am not happy with the final results. two here and then 
and our school girls puzzle should be in good shape. Just finger press here. See how our seams lined up. I think that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. All right, I'd say let's give it one press and then we can move on to our next one. Hit that seam, flip it over this side. And then, since we have finger pressed, it falls in place a little bit. It's kind of got the idea, but we do have to finish it off. Give it a little tug just to make sure things are nice and straight. Not stretching, just straight. There is a difference. Alrighty, friends. We've got block number five. In our book, it's called The Old Maid's Puzzle. It's a classic block also known by a couple different names, including the School Girls Puzzle. I think it came together pretty nicely. It's a good classic one to practice. I'm pretty pleased with it. I hope yours are coming out well. I'm anxious to see what you guys are working on and to hear how it's going, hear how you're enjoying the process, the sampler process. I think it's kind of fun, and I hope you guys will join us next time for block number six. This is Denise from the University of Sewing saying thanks so much, guys.